Hey everyone, welcome to Live Trading Thursday. David Verbruggen here. Um, guess what, guys? The Fed has made the market kind of interesting. So we're going to be taking a close look at that and seeing what's going on. Uh, but before we jump over to taking a look at what the Fed has done, keep in mind, guys, that all these examples in this live trading session should be viewed uh, for educational purposes only and not taken as trading or investment advice. With that said, uh, go ahead and get your tickers loaded up, um, the questions you have, stocks you want to look at. You know, last week, I don't remember who did this, but someone uh, sent in a question and they offered a lot of detail. And it was fantastic. It wasn't just, hey, let's look at this ticker. It was they were looking at a specific ticker, a specific trade, and they gave they outlined everything that they were looking as far as managing that trade. There was a lot of really good detail. And we had a fantastic discussion and some really just pure coaching moments within that. So that was that was awesome, guys. If if um if you send in a ticker and if you've got some extra detail of something that you're looking at, something you want to consider, um, you know, maybe instead of just throwing out a ticker, you're, you're thinking, hey, how about a credit spread on this? Um, or what about a, a debit spread or a straight call? You know, something like that. Um, some more detail that really helps in helping us uh, just analyze these trades and giving you better feedback. So with that, um, yeah, Lisa, I see you right there uh, asking, can you give a market overview for SPY? Yeah, we're going to be doing that pretty much looking at the, the SPX, which is just, you know, the, the index of the SPY, essentially. Um, we're going to be looking at that first here because we always want to start with looking at the overall market. So with that, let's go ahead and do that now. I'm um, sharing my screen here. You can see, i got to grab a quick refresh here on charts by Tradeway. Um, yeah. Okay, here we go. So. Um, when we were looking at this last week, I had this downtrending line in here and that, that was a pretty good line. Um, but then as we saw, Hey, our highs are getting lower, right? Got a high, a lower high, a lower high. So, Hey, what if we move that line over and put it right about there? And that actually worked out pretty well, right? That worked out pretty well if, as, as you can see. So we may be dragging that line out a little further if needed. Um, market definitely moved down from here, big day, and then a couple small candles. And then yesterday was the big one, one of the big ones, right? And um, the Fed essentially announced that they will not be lowering interest rates until at least September, 2024. So we're looking at at least another year um, of the same or higher interest rates. So that, of course, sent the market downward pretty quickly. Um, you know, the market was not happy to hear that. So you get this massive candlestick down uh, and then overnight, pretty big gap down. We haven't seen a gap down that size in a while. It's been a while. And today, just more negativity, just moving down. Um, so it's gotten kind of ugly the last couple of days, right? It's gotten kind of ugly. So then it kind of brings up the question of, you know, where are we going here? Right. We've got this M pattern that has, you know, uh, followed through to the downside and how far down are we going to go? Well, I've got this 4,300 line on here and it, you can see it's a, it's just a clicked horizontal line that goes into infinity, both to the left and to the right. And I only put those lines down if there's some significant historical um, price pivots there. So let's let's zoom out here real quick. Let's take a uh, got to go further than a year. Let's go a three year weekly. Here we go. So you can see here. Actually, it's harder to see now with a weekly, but there were some pivots right there. There's a big pivot here as well. It acted as some support a few times as well there. So 4,300 has been a pretty important level to watch here closer. And now you can see how um, earlier in the year we ran up to 4,300, hesitated there for a week before moving back up. So we could potentially be looking at um, hitting that 4,300 level even, I mean, honestly, it could happen today, right? But um, probably more likely tomorrow if we continue to move down, right? So that's kind of what we're looking at. It's it's uh, it's gotten ugly uh, for the bulls. Um, now, if you're bearish, you're probably loving what you're seeing. Right. 
Um, so today, what are we going to primarily be looking for? Primarily, we want to be looking for some downtrending trades, some bearish trades. And we have some tools in Charts by Tradeway to help us with that. Because we always want to go ahead and be trading kind of with the tide, right? With the market tone. That's a big, a big component. And if we're trying to trade against the, the overall market, essentially, um, you're losing out on a pretty big edge. Losing out on a pretty big edge. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, Lisa's asking, is this the beginning of the expected dip? Well, that's a great question. Um, I don't know, right? I don't know what the the future holds necessarily. Um, this could be, you know, this could be the, what Lisa's talking about here. You know, we had this 2022 bear market and then surprisingly, we, we were quite bullish this year so far, right? And many of us are still expecting kind of another uh, significant leg down. Um, and this could be the start of that. You know, if we continue down, and then break, you know, 3,600 and continue down, at, that would show, yes, okay, this is a full-blown recession. So is are we seeing the beginnings of that? Maybe, right? But again, I can't tell the future. Um, but it's something that we need to be prepared for, right? Uh, Benjamin's saying, um, gush call option. I'm not sure. Gush, maybe, it, maybe that's a taker. Let's take a look here. Whoops. Wrong thing here. Let's take a look at Gush. All right. So this is, it's okay. It's a leveraged ETF uh, on oil and gas. And by leverage, I mean it moves two times, right? Two, two times. So uh, every time that the underlying um, uh, symbol essentially moves up a dollar, then and this is going to move up two dollars. That, that's how it's leveraged in this case. Um, so if I'm understanding you correctly here, looking at a potential call option, well, um, you know, I, I'd say, well, what are you seeing in the pattern? And it, it's pulled back quite a bit, but it hasn't bounced yet, right? Whoop, hold on a second. I'm on a three-year weekly. Let's redo that. Let's look at the six month daily. That's what I like to look at as a daily chart. Um, and OK, still I'm still kind of thinking the same thing here. It's it's gotten kind of ugly. It's pulled back quite a bit. Here's the thing to remember with leveraged ETFs, guys, it's leveraged both ways. Right. So if you go ahead and get into a call option and it goes the wrong direction, it's going to go the wrong direction twice as fast, just as it would go the right direction twice as fast. Uh, in this case, it's twice as fast. There's other leveraged ETFs out there that are three times. I think TQQQ is a, a three times leverage, if not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so just things to keep an eye on, keep to, to, to be aware of. You have to be right. You know what I mean? And, and if you're not right, you have to stop out quickly. But I don't see anything in this pattern right now that's saying, hey, we should go ahead and get into a call option. Um, you might be thinking this line here. OK, OK, I could see that. But is that little tiny wick? Is that enough for me to say, yep, we're turning around, especially when it's below the 50? No, not yet. Not yet. I'd rather see a pattern. I'd rather see it move up, come back down, bounce, and then maybe we can consider that. All right. Uh, Benjamin also wants to look at Apple. Looking at October 6th expiration, a 175 call. Okay, so here we are. One, so just a straight call option with uh, October 6th expiration. So that's a really quick expiration, right? Um, you know, in, in, our, in our teaching, we want to go out about three or four months for a step two call option. And here we're looking at only two weeks or so. Um, and I don't see anything here that suggests that we should move up a ton. Uh, maybe it might come back up to this downtrend. This line hasn't even been proven. I just threw it on there to see if it could get proven, but it hasn't yet. You know what I mean? Um, don't really see a good, we could throw a line right there. We could try and put a line right there, but it hasn't bounced up off that line yet. So I'd say definitely not, not yet. I wouldn't want to be in a call on this right now. Um, and 
Yeah, Benjamin, you're also asking about uh, Apple call option 182.50. I don't know if you're, are, are you referring to a bear call credit spread here? Or are you actually thinking like a straight call? Because if you're doing a 182.50, that strike price is here. So you're way out of the money with a very short term expiration. Now that's how you, it's actually interesting to bring that up. Out of the money, short term expiration. If you go to YouTube University, right? And you try and learn how to trade that's probably what you're going to see a lot of. You're probably going to see a lot of short-term out of the money, um, uh, op straight options that have the potential of just making massive home runs um, as far as an ROI. But we want to look for more consistency. And oftentimes in YouTube University, they're not teaching you about management, right? Um, they may not even talk to you about uh, a good buy point, but the management is the most important part. And then right after that, a good buy point can help limit your risk, right? So in a way, that's kind of part of managing ourselves as a trader, right? So uh, I, I, I'm not saying, Benjamin, that you're going to YouTube University. I'm just saying I've seen a lot of that out there. And that's why we like to teach instead, hey, how about we go ahead and be a little more, uh, let's, let's be safer, at least early on in our trading while we're learning. And let's do further out expiration and let's go in the money. All right. There you go. Benjamin's saying bear call spread. All right. So if we're looking at a bear call credit spread, yeah, I would like that um, a lot more. Let's see here. 182.50. So let's play with this. If you're looking at a 182.50, maybe with a 185, let's call it 185 as the the long leg there and October 6th as the expiration. So right about that right there. If we're thinking, hey, that's a potential credit spread, I could buy into this, right? You've got your uh, EMAs inverted here. The last um, resistance point, you know, pivot that we had is the 20 day EMA. And you even have the 50 days protection, right? Now it's still within this line, but that line hasn't been, um, confirmed necessarily as a trend line. Let's take a look and see what we would be getting if we uh, did that trade here. So October 6th, 182.50, 185. So we're looking at $33 of potential profit for every $217 risked. So you're looking at right around 15% ROI potential. So that's pretty decent. The only thing that I'm saying, hmm, I'm not liking about it is the, the entry point, I can't really say the buy point because with a credit spread, we're primarily selling, right? But the entry point isn't great, right? So if this thing could move up a little bit and bounce down off the 20 day again, then I might be more interested in doing that credit spread, right? And then I also want to make sure the most important part is the management, right? So how am I going to manage that? What are my exits? You know, that was multiple it's not just where am I going to exit, it's what are my exits? So if it goes against me, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to exit? If it, it goes my direction, where am I going to exit for the profit? Those are very important things we need to have in mind right there. Perfect. Um, all right. Sounds good, guys. Well, uh, one last thing I want to leave you guys with. Here. Actually, no, it's, I got two other things here. Um, I mentioned at the beginning and you know, we've got some tools in Charts by Tradeway to help us find some, some downtrending trades. I've shown this before, but I know we've always got people that are new coming on as well. And I just want to show you guys how easy this is if you're like, okay, where do I go find some downtrending trades? Let's just come up here to the Find tab and we're going to choose the Scans. And I'm going to look, uh, you can see here, I got four different categories I can choose from. I like to just go to Outlook, right? It's just kind of an easy way to think about it. What is my outlook on the market? Am I bullish? Am I bearish? Am I kind of stagnant? Or are things just kind of wild and volatile, right? You might be thinking, oh, it's wild and volatile. Yeah, maybe. Um, but based off of what the market has done now in the last few days, I would primarily be considering looking at a bearish um, outlook, and then there's several different um, pattern types within here. Uh, I like to keep it simple and come to chart pattern declining channel. That's another way of just saying downtrend. 
If I click on that, it brings up all 62 of those um, uh, options there. So out of 11 or 12,000 different stocks, we just narrowed it down to 62 different stocks that based off the criteria that's built into charts by trade weights, showing that these are downtrending. Now, does that mean that they're at a buy point? No, not necessarily. Does it mean that it's a pretty downtrend? No, not necessarily. This is where the human eye, our trained eyes have to come into play and narrow this list down even further. Um, so I can go ahead and I just click the checkbox button. I'm going to select them all. And after I do that, I can just hit the beaker button and it's going to send them to research and you can hit the chart button. And if I'm moving kind of fast on this, guess what? These things are recorded. So you can always go back, rewatch this and find the button clicks. So just starting from the top here, AMD, what does it look like it's been doing lately? Downtrending, right? We can grab some lines and we can start drawing some lines. Let's see, hmm, I could probably do better on my lines than that. Maybe even up here. Sometimes you just got to play with it a little bit, right? Could that be considered a, a decent line? Got one, two, three, four, five touches. Yes, that looks pretty good. Is this at a buy point? No, it's already moved down quite a bit, right? It's already moved down quite a bit. It's coming up to the 200 simple. Potentially, it finds some support there, bounces up, retests this line. And if it fails there, we could be looking at a variety of different bearish trades. At that point, straight put, bear call, bear put, all kinds of things we could do there, right? Disney, look at that. That's been downtrending as well. 50 days seems to be doing pretty well as the resistance line. Um, so there you go. Um, let's start moving through these pretty quick here. We, you guys know how to draw lines now. But you can see Nike also downtrending. NEE, -E, I don't even know that one. NEE, -E, also downtrending there as well. Some of these patterns are going to be prettier than others. Boeing dropping like a rock here in the last few days. That's a five EMA loser right there. Look at that. That, wow. Okay, that would have been nice to catch if uh, we'd be able to catch that at the right time. But that, well, hmm. we wouldn't have caught it until it broke this line because that was a pretty decent uptrending support line right there. Uh, and anything below that, you know, almost be wanting to, wanting to pull back. So, man, Boeing really getting hit hard. So you can see here, wow, HDB getting crushed the last few days. But is HDB a pretty pattern? You know, can you really do much with that? It's going to be hard on that one, right? So there's definitely some of these. It's like, yep, that is tanking. That is moving down, but it's not a great pattern. So it's our job. Now we can go through 62 stocks instead of 11,000 stocks and start to narrow things down. And um, maybe when you're done with going through the 62, you're like, hey, I've got 12 patterns here that are looking really good. And five that might be imminently tradable this week. That's how we work as traders to not just find a trade, but to find the best trades. Yep. All right, guys. So one other thing I want to leave you guys with, and I know I, we got a few tickers in the um, comment box. Um, I, I'll just say in the future, let's try and get those in a little sooner because um, we are a little time limited on this one here. Um, so that would be awesome, guys. But let's go ahead and uh, I want to let you guys know about Workshop 2. Something interesting has been happening. Uh, Jared Russell, who heads up our workshops, he's been uh, adding some material and kind of revising the workshops, right? And so uh, he did a revised version of Workshop 1 with some new material in there, and that was last weekend. In two weekends from now, uh, he's going to be doing Workshop 2 with some of that revised material as well. So if you haven't been a part of the workshops yet and you're interested in kind of taking your education further with some new updated information, go ahead and contact events at tradeway.com. We'd love to give you information um, about that and just help you get into the workshop series. So with that, got to sign off for today, but uh, I'll be back with you guys next week. So um, be sure to get those tickers in uh, right at the beginning next week. That way we can hit them all and uh, we'll see you guys then. Thanks, guys.